Today you see two super cute woven tops. I've gone a little bit out of my comfort zone with the length. As always, there's a lot of options. You can get what you really like. Check out this cuteness. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing limitless sewing and today I have some amazing woven top. A lot of you in the northern hemisphere are headed for spring, getting some warm weather here and there. I'm headed to autumn but look at me, I'm still in my little straps, it's still very hot. I'm always up for sewing summer-ish garments because you know I wear them all the time here in Brazil. This is brand new from Pattern Emporium and it's called Rise and Shine Top. Love the name, super cute. There's quite a lot of features for you to choose from. It's designed for woven fabrics. It's a sleeveless top, there's no sleeves here. The neckline is rounded and it could be a little higher, a little lower. I've gone with the lower option as usual. I think the lower neckline suits a larger bust. At least that's what I've seen on myself and other people. The higher neckline isn't high either, so I think that would have been okay as well, but both of mine are the lowest version. The armhole and neckline is finished with binding that's sewn to the inside. But as you know, you can have some fun with binding. <laughs> I've sewn one of mine with the binding to the inside and on another one, I did the binding exposed so that you can see the binding. Remember I have a really good video on binding where I show you how to do it. I always link it down below when there's binding involved because it's very detailed. The silhouette of the top is flared. It's not a swing style so it's not extremely going out like that but it's slightly flared, it's not straight. There are four lengths to choose from. The shortest length isn't at your natural waist, it's still a bit lower than that. You'll find the exact length for all of these options in the finished garment measurements chart. So you have one, two, three, four, <laughs> going all the way down to a tunic. Look, I don't sew tunics, I, this is not my thing. I usually sew a top that hits my mid hip, sometimes going to my full hip. But this time I've gone rogue and I've sewn length number one and length number two. And it's all got to do with the options of the hem that I've chosen here. So you can hem this normally, just fold up and hem. If I would have done that, I maybe would have chosen a longer version. But because I want to try the hem facing, I thought let's go with a shorter length, especially paired up with my fabric choice. I thought length number two was going to be good for the hem facing. I also saw this hem facing option in the Be Mine balloon sleeve blouse. I've sewn last year, that time I just hemmed it normally because I made longer tops. <laughs> but now I thought let's just try a shorter top. And for my second version, I went even shorter because you can also sew the hem allowance a little bit bigger, an inch, and thread an elastic, and then it just brings it in. So I thought that has to be closer to my natural waist than lower. So that's why I went with the shortest version for that hem option. So there's all those options. <laughs> Another thing you can do instead of doing the elastic is doing a little buttonhole, either in the center front or on the side, and putting a drawstring through and bringing it in that way. So that's a little hack that is described within the patterns. I think that's really nice. If you want to do a center front seam, you can do that. It's part of the pattern. But if you don't want to do that, you can just fold away that little bit on the paper and just put it on the fold. When I would do this center seam is when I have linen because I think if it's top stitched, it's really decorative and it just becomes part of the look. If it's a print, I wouldn't bother because why would you want to cut up a print? So it's up to you, whatever you want. I do also like a seam either on the front or on the back because it's easier to place on fabric. The layout, you use much less fabric if you do it like that than if you try to just put them both on the fold. Because the Rise and Shine top is a brand new pattern at Pattern Emporium, it is 15% off through Monday noon, but in Australia. So that's Sunday night-ish around this area of the world. As usual, it's not just the Rise and Shine top that's on sale. There are also a lot of patterns that can go with it bottoms so if you click on the link and see the release page you'll see the rise and shine top along with lots of skirts and pants i've actually styled my tops with three of the patterns that are on sale right now the vacation vibes the getaway shorts and the coastal side split skirt so you'll see those later on mixed in there with my new tops i already have tutorials on these so if you want to check them out I'll link them down below. What you also find is my affiliate link. If you click on that link and it takes you to the website and you end up purchasing a small commission back, that is one way I make an income making all these helpful videos on YouTube. So if you use it, I'm grateful. <laughs> now for the fabrics, you need woven fabrics as I said. Don't try to make this in a neat, I think it will just end up being oversized and there are other options for neat tanks at Pattern Emporium, so just choose your nice wovens for this one. <laughs> you can choose 
more structured fabrics, lighter weight cotton lawn, light chambray, a linen. I went with linen rayon blends. They are slightly heavier than I would usually use. I suggest if you choose something heavier like a linen rayon blend that you stick to the shorter versions and the flare of the design is more visible here, especially with the hem facing. So it's all got to do with the fabric choice, you know, if I would have chosen something lightweight and drapey like rayon, crepe, silk, something like that, tensile twill maybe, I would have maybe done the longer length as well. So even though all these fabrics are going to work, they're going to look super different according to your hem style that you choose, whether it's hemmed, whether it's got a facing, or whether it's got the elastic. I've kept mine structured this time. I've kept mine shorter, just straying like a thousand miles away from my comfort zone. But I thought, why not? Let's give it a go. I know in theory how to pair these and how to style them. So I really wanted to test that out and I'm very glad I did. <laughs> For binding, you're going to be making it from the same fabric. There are pattern pieces. I think you should. It always looks so much better than store-bought bias tape. If you have the time and the little bit of fabric you need, I suggest you make your own. So extra bias tape is not listed as a notion here because you will be making it yourself. Now for the sizing, it goes from 4 to 30 Australian. That goes up to a 54 and a half inch hip. This one's really cool because it's got three bust options. So you have your regular fit, no doubt. That means if you look at the size chart, that means that if you look at the size chart, the high bust and the full bust measurement are within the same size. You can use the one without the dart and that goes throughout all the sizes. Now, if you plot your measurements and your high bust is one size and your full bust is one size larger, then we have one full bust adjustment done with a dart that's not so big. If your high bust and your full bust is two sizes larger and more, that's got a larger dart intake and more shaping on the side. I think these three options are going to help a lot of people. Different size darts I think are always helpful because not everyone has the same sewing cup size. This is not a loose or fitted top, I think it's right there in between. At the bust you get about four to five inches of positive ease which is super comfortable to wear. And then because it's flared out, depending on the length that you're making, you're going to have more than 10 inches of ease at the waist and hips. When I looked at everything and plotted everything down, I'm a size 18 at Pattern Emporium. I decided to sew a size 16 just because I wanted a little bit less ease. That's something that you can do. I have sized down in some patterns. Sometimes I sew my correct size, but it's up to you. Just make sure that you are going to have enough space if you choose to make one size less. I would not make two sizes less. I think one is the most you can get away with. So I've sewn a size 16 here. So look, in theory, in theory, I fall within one size. I could have gotten away with no dart. But I love darts. I love the shaping they give. I do feel that with a C cup, a dart would benefit me. So if I'm sort of in the middle ground and not knowing what to choose, I would rather choose the bust dart. I just chose the option with the smaller dart and I don't regret it. I've done that with other patterns here that have a bust dart as an option as well. Even though I could get away with not having a dart, I think it looks better with the dart. With a C cup or more, I think you're always going to benefit. So even though I'm in the same size, I chose the bust dart anyway. <laughs> no fitting adjustments, no changes to the pattern. Just sewed it, made it, <laughs> and that's it. As usual, I have filmed some helpful sewing for you. We're going to go over general construction, the pattern pieces. And I'm going to focus on the hem facing because it's something I haven't filmed here for you. This could also work for the Be Mine balloon sleeve top, would be the same technique. So let's see how to put this together. We're using 3-8 seam allowance on the main seams, like the side, the bottom facing. But for the binding technique on the neckline and armholes, you're going to be using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So make sure you pay attention to that detail. So let's see. These are the pattern pieces for one of my Rise and Shine tops. There are lots of options you can choose. This is the front right here. I've chosen to have the optional center front seam because it is just easier to place on fabric. I think linen can always get away with a center front seam that can be top stitched that it could be a feature, it could be decorative, so I have that right there. If you don't want to have that center front seam, just fold that little bit of paper away and put it on the fold, that is up to you. I do have a bust dart here because I'm doing one of the full bust adjustment options. The back is always on the fold. Now you can choose to do hem facings and this is what I have right here, front and back. I blocked fuse those before cutting them out so they're nice and accurate. Please see a video I have all about block fusing 
so you can know what I'm talking about. Another option for the hem is just to hem it normally. That regular hem would be at 5 8 but you can also do a hem at an inch and then that would be a casing where you put an elastic through. So those are all hem options. This one's going to have the facing. And then this is binding that I'm going to use. First things first, you always want to stay stitched. This is the front neckline and I'm going to sew from the shoulder into the center for both pieces. And because this is a sleeveless garment and it has the potential of stretching out here and you end up with baggy armholes, I'm also going to stay stitched from the shoulder down to this area. Always in the same direction, all the same for all the pieces for the front and the back. Later on, the binding is going to be sewn using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So this stay stitching has to be very much on the edge, smaller than a quarter of an inch. Regular stitch length, I'm using three. For the back neckline, we sew from the shoulder into the center and then stop and then flip the fabric and sew from the shoulder into the center. You don't want to do it in one go because it could stretch out one of the sides and they end up not being totally symmetrical. Your version may or may not have darts depend on the fitting option that you've taken. There are two full bust adjustment options. I'm doing the smaller one so this dart is relatively small. There is a larger full bust adjustment with a larger dart intake. I always start from the tip and go to the widest part of the dart. I don't back stitch at the beginning. I just leave the threads there so I can take them and just do a couple of knots by hand and that gives you a really nice clean finish on the tip that's how the dart point looks on the other side it's super neat so always remember that no back and forth over here put your needle in with your hand make it land right on the edge and then start pressing your pedal to sew the rest of the dart now I'm going to spend some time at the serger after sewing the bust darts I am serging the sides I'm going to do this for the front and the back when I eventually sew the seam I want to press it open and this is just my option for linen if it was a lighter weight fabric, then I wouldn't do this. I would sew the seams and then serge the, both of the layers together. I'm also going to do the same thing for the center front seam I'm going to have because I also want to press that one open so I can top stitch it on each side. I'm going to do the shoulders, basically everything. I like serging the edges if I'm going to press open afterwards because it's just easier access. Now that the edges are done, I can sew my main seam and this is the center front seam that's optional. Remember, if you don't want to do this, don't do this. Put it on the fold. If I had a print, I would not do this. I wouldn't want to break up the print for a seam that doesn't need to be there. But for, for a solid and for linen that can be top stitch, I think it's really nice. And it takes less fabric to cut it this way too. So that's really important for me. I'm going to go and press the seam open and then I'm going to top stitch on both sides, just decorative. This is a presser foot. This has an L on it. It's also a type of blind hem presser foot, but different. When you move this, it moves this edge in or out. So you can actually get whatever seam allowance you want and it's really helpful. I've set it here to about an eighth of an inch. I'm really liking this blind hem presser foot that's adjustable. If you move this, this ridge will change position so you can get wider or narrower. So it depends, you can get the seam allowance that you'd like small ones. I have already top stitched on one of these so the seam allowance on this side is flat right there and now I'm going to go down the other side. So you can see this middle area of the presser foot is going right into that seam and that's what's going to give me that neat Look how neat that looks. Just so pretty. It's decorative but also functional. Linen begs for this type of top stitching. <laughs> I love it. This is the front already and I'm just going to put the back on top, right sides together. In the instructions you'll see that at this point you just need to sew one shoulder seam. Then that would make sewing the binding onto the neckline faster and easier because you would go from here all the way through that seam of the shoulder that way. And then once the binding is in then you would sew the second shoulder seam. That could be easier and faster. I would just rather do it the way I always do it. That takes a little while longer but I don't mind that because I'm going to get folded binding finishes on the inside. So I'm not going to film the binding. I already have plenty of content around how I like to do binding. I'm going to bind my neckline. I'm also going to sew the side seams, just straight seams over here, press those seams open. And then I'll be back to show you how the hem facing will go onto here. I've already done the armholes and the neckline with my binding right there.
here we have the top almost done I have done the armholes the neckline the binding all of that is all complete all that's left is to do the hem facing right here this is the front facing I've written F's over it so I don't get confused it would follow the same shape as the bottom of this top if I put this right on top it will match perfectly all we need to do is put this on top right sides together and this is how this is going to be sewn and then flipped to the other side so this is going to be the same for the front over here and for the back on the other side. I have little marks in the center and I'm going to match that up with a center front seam. I do have a center front seam. If you don't have one then just make a mark on the center front that would be on the fold. So I'm just going to put a few pins here just to hold this in place. Now this is the back and I'm going to take my back facing and place it on top as well and I'm going to put a few pins over here as well. So with this partially pinned right there I'm going to sew the side seams of these facings. If it's hard for you to visualize how a curved facing goes it's just easier to place it like this right on top of the table, pin it in a few places and then sew the side seams, that's what I'm doing. Side seams are sewn with 3 8 seam allowance, the same as the side seams of the top. Okay, I've been to my table and pinned everything together. You know that everything appears magically pinned in this channel. I don't spend time filming pinning because that's super boring. Side seams of the facing match the side seams of the top. And now we can sew this together. Seam allowance here is going to be 3 8 of an inch. And then we're going to be trimming it a little bit before flipping this to the other side. I'm trimming this to leave it at about a quarter of an inch in here. Now this curve, because it's a hem that's longer in the center front and it curves shorter in the sides, it's a convex curve, it means it curves out. That means you don't need to snip anything because you're not going to have tension on the seam when you flip it to the other side. Different is a curve like this that's concave, it goes in, so if you wouldn't snip the curves then you would have tension inside with a seam allowance. So it's good to think about those things before just blindly snipping away because it's something that you're used to doing with facings. In this case because the curve is convex and it goes out, it's something that you don't need to do at all. What we are going to do though is understitch. So we're going to push the seam allowance towards the facing under here, like that, and we're going to sew right there on the edge. And I'm going to use my presser foot to guide and make it easier. I have the facing on my left hand and the seam allowance is tucked right underneath and this presser foot is helping me sew on the edge super neatly. After I go all the way around, I'm going to serge this edge over here so that it's nice and neat and then we can flip the facing to the other side. After surging the edges, I've been to iron and press that facing to the inside. I've given it a good hand base at the iron while everything was super flat. The understitching is going to keep it nice and neat on the inside without the seam showing on the edge, which is what you always want with the facing. I've basted it on the inner area of the surged edge as a reference, so that is my guide. The basting stitch is also my guide as to where the top stitch from, so it's nice and neat. Doing it from the right side of the fabric this time, just so I can really see what I'm doing, how it's gonna look. And that's it, it's as easy as that. And the, the finish of the hem is gonna be super different, nice and structured. I think it's really good for linen. I actually made a bonus pattern because I'm not going to just show you the two Rise and Shine tops. I made a pair of Vacation Vibes Palazzo pants that you'll see in the styling section and I'll show you them a little bit later. So there's three makes to see here. This is my first one. I actually have the same fabric in a pair of shorts and a shirt and a pant. You know when I buy like four yards of fabric and then I make a lot of things, well, I still had some to make this top so I'm going to show you later a set with some shorts. I think it looks really cute. It's a really dark red, burgundy type of situation. It looks really different on camera. This time I did the binding exposed like this because I just like it and I could have done it to the inside but I decided to do it like that just because, you know, you can. <laughs> so I think that's really nice and neat. I'm really happy with my choice. There is my center front seam. It's top stitched on either sides. It looks really neat. There is my bust dart right there, it's super discreet. I think it does make a difference for the fit. 
and then down below is the facing very nice structured really highlights the flared feature i think it looks really nice and i'm glad i gave this shoulder length a go now look at my shoulder seam i also top stitched it on each of the sides to mimic what i did in the center front seam i think that's really cool this is the top inside out i have my seams pressed open the facing covers it and it's very neat right there center front seam when i know i'm going to be pressing seams open i find it much easier to serge the edges first and then do my regular seams you just have better access to the serger that way because this is a top that's more voluminous and it's got a bit more volume here at the hem it sort of stands out a little you can really see the flared feature because of the structured fabric and the facing i decided to use slimmer silhouette bottoms skirts shorts pants so that it could balance out the outfit i think that is what makes me feel the best I don't think I would want to have something super wide on the bottom, although with one of the styling options I have done it and I think it still works. And I think it still works because this is a shorter top. So if this was slightly longer, I wouldn't be happy to put something wide at the bottom. So let me show you my new Vacation Vibes Palazzo pants. I already have a video about it. I made rayon versions, one for myself, one for my mum a couple of years ago when it was released. Now this pattern has two leg styles. One is a saddle flare, which is the one I've sewn before. They're still wide leg pants, but they're not as wide. And then there's a dramatic flare, the very wide version, and that's what I've made now. So it's quite boring, but it's gonna be a workhorse. I've kept it simple, no pockets, nothing like that. It's got the elasticated waistband. If you've seen my recent video that shows you six ways to sew an elasticated waistband, this one uses method number two according to the pattern instructions and i did sew it like that because why not <laughs> look how wide this leg is it's so nice you know these wide legged style pants take up a whole length for one leg i made them as long as i possibly could with the fabric i had on hand because i was using this same linen fabric to make my second rise and shine top so it's always a bit of a situation there when I'm trying to get two patterns out of the same amount of fabric. So this one is sort of at my ankles and it ends up looking more like a maxi skirt. A little bit of a cropped wide leg pant. I think it looks really cool, especially the way I'm going to wear it with sandals. So yeah, it's really, really nice. I really recommend this pattern. It's a real nice sole that has a lot of options. You'll see this one paired with both of my tops. So let's see the Rise and Shine top this version start with slimmer type bottoms except for this one and i think it still works this is my first rise and shine top the one you saw in the tutorial this is a linen rayon blend in burgundy i've made a size 16 for both of my versions i've got a monochromatic look here with one of my lounge skirts they are different fabrics but they are almost the same color i've got the length number two here and i've got a facing so it's a nice wide facing sewn in there nice and structured with this linen i love how it looks so you can see the center front seam as well it's a really neat finish i would do this only with shorter lengths i'm glad i gave the facing a go i don't usually do that i usually just hem normally i've got my dart there and i've got my binding and this binding i sewed it exposed which is different to the instructions which has it inside but that's how i did the black one you'll see later a slim silhouette with something more voluminous on top looks balanced and that's what this skirt achieves This is a really colorful knit skirt that I tend to wear quite a lot. It's got an elasticated waist. It's nicely fitted at the waist and hips. So I think it balances the volume of the Rise and Shine top really well. And it also goes with the colors in there. <laughs> it's a very colorful skirt. And I really love the length here of the top. I'm really glad I chose this second length and didn't make a longer one. It was a good choice for me. You'll see that with my black one, I went even shorter. <laughs> Here is another monochromatic look. I happen to have the getaway shorts, another pattern from Pattern Emporium in the same type of fabric. They're just older, <laughs> but 
but they go perfectly as a set here with sneakers in the same color and I love these for a nice hot summer day where I could go outside and walk all day and feel really comfortable. I love a linen set because it always looks a little bit more dressed up than other fabrics so I'm really happy to have this set. As soon as I knew that I could make a top with not much fabric I pulled out the little bit I had left over from this linen and made the top. The shorts also are a slimmer silhouette underneath so I'm good with wearing this with the top that has a bit more volume at the hem. These are a new pair of Vacation Vibes Palazzo pants I made in linen. I made them to go as a set with the second version you're going to see of the Rise and Shine but I think they go really well even though this is a wider leg bottom. I think it still works because the top is shorter. I would usually tend to pair this with something slimmer on the bottom but I think straying away from the rules here also works. You know, just do whatever you want, whatever makes you feel good. I feel great in this and I think it's a great pairing. Super comfortable, elasticated waist under there. I, I love being in all linen, it's just the best. This is my coastal split skirt. I made last year also from Pattern Emporium, slim style with a long slit on the side, super cute, perfect pairing with this top that's voluminous and shorter with a structured hem. I love this, I love dressing it up like this and I would go to church like this this weekend for sure. It's a great outfit, super fresh, super comfortable. The skirt underneath has a yoga waistband, I mean what more could you want? Comfortable waistband, nice and roomy top where you can breathe and eat and live your life. This is very much my style and I feel amazing. This is my second version. It's the same linen that you saw with my vacation vibes. It is a set. <laughs> I can wear them together or separately, but it was really good to make them out of the same black linen because sometimes black varies in tone. Sometimes blacks don't match other blacks and that upsets me. <laughs> anyway, this is the same neckline option, the lower neckline armhole. I do have the binding on the inside this time as per the pattern right there. I also have the center front seam, you can see top stitched right there on either sides, the bust that. The difference with this one is that this is length number one, this is the shortest length available. It's hemmed and it's got an elastic inside, super easy, I think it's super cute. I've got nothing this short in this style <laughs> and I think it goes really well this time with the wider bottoms. So you're going to see this one styled over wider bottoms. This is my second Rise and Shine top. It's really cute in black linen. I've got the crop version. It's just that this one has the hem turned into a casing with an elastic inside and it just brings it in. Styled here with my Walk Boldly pants. This is slightly below my natural waist, a few inches below it, but still the shortest top I would ever wear. And I would only wear a top like this with wider styles at the bottom, either skirt or pants. You can also fold that elastic underneath and tuck it in, and then it looks like you've tucked in a top, but you haven't. Sleeveless, I've got the lower neckline here finished with binding super neatly. There is a higher neckline if you want more coverage there, but I think this is okay. There is a center front seam that I'm using on mine, and I've top stitched them, but that is literally impossible to see on camera here. I have one of the full bust options with a dart here. There is one without a dart and a bigger dart if you need that, but mine's sort of in the middle. I've made a size 16 for both of my versions. This is a set I created. I made myself a brand new pair of Vacation Vibes Palazzo pants. These are woven. I made them a little bit shorter hitting the ankle so that it looks like a skirt and this is the wider leg option. I really love how it looks. It looks like a maxi skirt from far away but you can see these are pants. Very simple, the same fabric for the pants and for the top and I can wear them together and they look really cool together. As I said, this type of shorter top I'd only wear with wider leg pants, something that's not too fitted at the bottom, I think it looks more balanced. And I love this look here, I've got it paired with gold leather accessories and I feel super comfortable and a little bit dressed up, love it. These are my older pair of Vacation Vibes Palazzo pants I made a few years ago in rayon. This is a print. Of course, these are gonna go together and it's a lovely pairing. 
I love how this shorter top looks and I'm glad I took the risk of making a shorter top because I usually don't. The key is the elastic bringing it in. I think it looks really cute and is really different for me. So I'm glad I gave this option a go. Very nice. I'm sure I'm gonna make more of these because it's super wearable. Here is my coastal split skirt again. You saw it paired with my red top now with the black. I think it works really, really well. Even though this is a slimmer silhouette and I would usually pair this with something wider, the skirt isn't skin tight. It's not really, really tight. I think it's midway. So I think it works really well with a shorter top with an elastic there. Yeah, I'm just pushing the boundaries here and I'm glad I gave this a go because I think it looks really, really nice. Love the look here. A shorter top like this would be perfect with a wrap skirt, you could really see the wrap details. Although it's not tucked in or anything, it's not creating bulk because the top isn't longer. This skirt has a little bit of volume so I think it's perfect for a wrap skirt. If you like fuller skirts or circle skirts, this top would be perfect. It's just that I don't have items like that in my wardrobe because I don't wear full full skirts. This is the fullest skirt I would wear. So I think this is really good. Something smaller, shorter on the top looks really balanced with something with more volume on the bottom and I love how this looks. Of course the black, the red and the white is a combination I always really enjoy. As usual, sewing these was a great experience. All the options you have make it really fun. You can really choose what you prefer. The dads, what to say. The fact that they're already available for us that have a larger cup size is amazing. You don't have to do full bust adjustments and things. So that's really cool. Mine are shorter, length number one, length number two. Different hem options that I've sewn in the past. So that's always nice to sew something different and to experiment with styling. And that is so fun for me. I hope you enjoy the styling section. Remember that these cute tops and a lot of bottoms are 15% off through Monday noon, but in Australia, over here around Sunday night. <laughs> That's all from me. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. I have a really helpful technique video coming next. I know you really enjoy those and I love making them for you. Also, when you subscribe, tap on the notifications up to all so you never miss out all the helpful content that comes up here pretty frequently. See you soon.